This. 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 This is the Racer H2O Podcast. It's time to drop that flag. Go! And now here's your host. Three wide battle for the lead. Shoulder to shoulder going into turn one. Rips that boot around. Jared Roseberg. All right, troops. Welcome to the Racer Rich 2 podcast. Uh, hey, I'm your old pal, Jared. Great to have you back on the show. You know, this week uh, we're getting closer and closer to going back to Branson, Missouri for Powerboat Nationals racing there, both the Pro Tunnel 2 and the Hydro Cross. And as we get closer to the event on August 22nd and 23rd, I thought I'd touch base with a couple people from 2019 that had well, they had some success last year. And one guy is the guy we got on the line right now. I tell you, he, he came on strong he, and he proved that consistency is key when you win a championship. On the line now from Southern Florida, our 2019 Hydro Cross World Champion. Somebody call the cops. we got a killer on the line. It's Tom Keller. Tom, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you very much for having me. Well, you know, starting out last year, you were 18 years out of racing on the water. You came back. You came back with a vengeance. What was it that made you come back after being off the water for so long? Oh, it's that's a tough one. You know, I've been building motorcycles for uh, 15 years. I stopped racing jet skis 19 years ago, and I just started to get back into it. Uh, being married for a while, and I was just getting a little bored with life, so I decided to jump back on the skis. And uh, I really wasn't jumping back into race, but then I started practicing at the track uh, with other riders like Bauer Motorsports, Sam Mimi, Jay Cabrera, uh, a lot of great riders, Scooby Nagel, a lot of old old and really knowledgeable pros so i started ripping it out there with them and their children and uh realizing that you know what i still enjoy it i miss it and uh so i wanted to get back into it so i decided to just jump back into it and see see what i could do out there compared to being out for 19 years well you did pretty well and you did pretty well in race one if we go back in our time machine back to Tavares last year you won race one of Hydrocross Nationals in 2019. But let me ask you, if you didn't do so well, if you didn't get to the top of the podium at that race, would you have stuck with it through all of 2019? Or would you have said, okay, you know what, that was fun, and I'm just going to mess around a little bit more? Well, well I, did a, I did a local race. I did a local race for Mike Young, uh, Surf Promotions. He runs a great race. I did a little race with him, and I had a blast out there. I realized, wow, this is neat, interesting. I went out there, and uh, I'm sorry, I think it was Sean's race. Sean, Sean and Pastor Flea's race. It was his race, the first race I got into. He really pushed me out to go and race. So I showed up to his event, and uh, I dominated. I beat two of the number one guys in the industry. I beat Sam Mimi and Richard Taylor at that time, and I, uh, I was pretty proud of myself and to be able to hold that moment. And then I realized, you know, uh, maybe I should have got out of it or I'm going to get back into it at this time. And then I decided I heard about the uh, Powerboat Nationals tour and a couple of my friends were pumped up about it. I said, you know what, this sounds like something different. And uh, I wanted to do it. So I stepped into it. And let me tell you, it was a great opportunity I got into. I mean, you, you did a really great job last year. Like I said, consistency was key. You were able to earn the world championship title uh, with all the points you accumulated, a number of podiums throughout the season. And one place you podiumed was Branson, Missouri, the race we're leading up to now. In 2019, what, one thing that I'd like for you to talk about a little bit, and this is kind of strange, but Lake Tanny Como is a very interesting place to race. It's a pretty cold place to race. Tell the fans what it's like to be on a ski on Lake Tanny Como. Oh, let me tell you something. Uh different totally different uh it's this river race which is very wide the water's moving uh, uh hot outside very very cold water unexpectedly uh didn't expect it to be that cold uh great venue uh definitely the water was uh, something to try against because if you hit certain turns there's a little current in certain areas uh it was trying you all your abilities and i wiped out pretty bad out there and, and ate it and uh i definitely regretted that moment but the same thing is it taught me what i was doing after for the next one uh, got back up for that second race, and oh boy, it was so cold. I didn't know that they opened up the river up the way or something. All of a sudden, the water dropped around another 10 degrees. We were racing in water that was literally 48 degrees out there. And uh, that's, a, that's a challenge itself because a lot of things were happening out there. Your goggles were fogged up. Your hands were just totally locked up from being frozen out there. And uh, the conditions were tough. 
And I actually like that being a pro. I don't want anything to go out there and just sit there and say, oh, this is just an easy race. This is just going to be given to me. There were a lot of challenges out for an out water. And not even not even the racers I was going against. Those guys were a whole other venue. They were all fastest last year. And but that whole water challenge out there, that's what I'm looking forward to. I actually know what I'm going for, looking, going for this year. And I know what I'm going to have to expect out there. So I'm going to change the boat around a little bit just for that particular race, knowing how cold it was. That's going to help me out, I believe. Well, that leads me to my next question. You talked about the type of competition you had out there. You're fighting the cold temperature of the water on Lake Tanikuma, but you're also fighting some of the biggest names in the sport. They all come to Branson. It's one of the biggest races of the year. We know Christian Daly's going to be there again this year. We know that kid Hayden Skellett's going to be there again this year. Now, you finished on the podium last year. How hard is it to get on the podium anywhere on the hydrocross national schedule with the type of competition you have to go against yeah that's very hard to get on the podium because everything was changed up we had kristen uh kristen daly jump in he started dominating us real fast uh a little hayden skill he stepped up big time he started giving us a lot of competition out there and then matt johnson he was all over me half the time too uh those those few races are the ones i'm really looking forward to get back in the water with i mean all the other guys are excellent also gabriel uh, Team Safe, Brian will work with his badass boats. Those things are amazing. Uh, it really makes more racing over there at Powerboat Nationals right now. I see more competition in that racing than I just did another race just recently. And it was a good race, but I think there's more competition over there right now for me. That's what draws me to want to go to that race again. Well, you talked about uh, the competition, but you also mentioned earlier what I like to refer to as the youth movement in personal watercraft racing. We're seeing a lot of second-generation riders come in Guys like Sammy Nemi, we're seeing Devin Farthing's son Dustin come out. We're seeing Hayden Skellett, who is a teenager out there tearing it up. What's it like to be a guy that was out of racing for 18 years and hop on the water against these teenagers that are absolutely tearing it up out there? Well, the crazy part is I used to race all their fathers. And me getting into it nineteen, me getting into it nineteen years later. Now I'm racing their kids. It's almost like mini me's of their parents. They're very excellent. They're on the top notch equipment, which you know is flawless. And those little, those little kids, those second generation kids, they, I think they have it a lot better than the first because they have a parent that was already there, a parent that knows what it takes, and they're great. Most parents are great coaches when it comes to getting their kids into that water because they want to see the kids strive and do awesome. And yeah, man, it's really nice to see fathers and son teams out there. I mean, look at Mark Land and Chris Land. Those, that's a father and son team. They just tear it up all the time. Dad last year got pro sport champion. His son just rips on the big boats all around. That's just good. I love seeing that get that in out in racing. I love seeing the second generation and their parents still out there racing too. I know Dustin backs off and Sam Mimi backed off because he's done letting their kids race and and that's awesome because they don't want to go out there and probably whoop up on their kids or get whooped up by their kids either way. But you know, but I'm still out there running with them, and it feels great. I know they look at me like, hey, here comes the old goat or here comes the old guy. But uh, I'm able to stick right up to them, and there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of knowledge running with these new kids and seeing what they can do out there and seeing what their parents have taught them. So I, I really enjoy seeing that second generation more than anything out there, seeing the kids just going for it and, and seeing the parents celebrate with them and seeing the parents – seeing the parents do what they used to do and now they're they're getting to share it with their kids that just makes it the best well these kids are getting on top-notch equipment as you said they have great uh tutors with their parents who are experienced and knowledgeable and all this what advice would you give them or what advice do you have for them as a defending world champion coming into a very abbreviated 2020 season my advice to them is just take it make it have fun with it don't take it too serious. You take it too serious, it really gets to you. It drove me out of it. I took it too serious for a while. So have fun with it. Enjoy it. Remember, it is a sport, and other people are doing it also. Don't be selfish and always try to help each other out. And that's what's going to make the sport thrive and get better. I just don't really dig too much when some person might win and they just feel like they should have won more than just that win. I think, you know, I'm, I'm happy with second. I'm happy with third and fourth sometimes out there with the best. Because one of the way I have the opportunity to run with them and it teaches me to get better. That's, that's something I think that everybody should strive for is helping each other out there more often. I love seeing it. Well, aside from the advice for the kids in 2020, what advice do you have or do you want to give any advice to any fellow rider coming to Branson on August 22nd and 23rd to race on Lake Tanikomo? Are you willing to share any secrets or give any advice to someone who maybe hasn't raced there before? Yeah, if I raced there before, yeah, well, I should. I mean, have they raced there before? I don't know. But I 
I do know that I do know I can tell them advice getting into it again. Just be ready. Be ready for some odd conditions. Be ready for a good race. Uh, get ready for a great atmosphere. Branson, Branson has a great atmosphere. It's such a cool town. So all of that just goes together for a great race atmosphere. And like I said, I just hope that they're ready to they're ready to go up against the old guns because I'm coming out there and I'm ready to go go at it again. Have some fun with this year. Speaking of fun and speaking with speaking about Branson, I mean those two words really go together. Talk about Branson as a city and how much fun we had there last year. Yeah, that city. This city is amazing. Let me tell you something. This city is amazing. The whole place is like a cartoon town. The thrift shops, all the people are so nice. They want you back there. Uh, we did a big thing for the kids out there. They lined us up so we could meet all the kids. The kids really get into it. They think it's neat to be able to meet the people that are on the water racing as we can share their town, as they're sharing their town with us. We get to enjoy it. So many nice activities for the racers to do in the evening time and daytime. It's just one of those fun towns. That's why I knew when I went there last year, I said to myself, no matter what happens, I'll make sure I'm going back to that, that race, Branson up there, because it's just a cool atmosphere. I told all my friends about it. Well, here's hoping we have a huge fleet of boats for the Branson Grand Prix. It's on August 22nd and 23rd. Powerboat Nationals is putting it on. And, hey, don't forget, guys, we've got national TV coverage Racer H2O will be there with our cameras rolling. And one guy I'm sure we're going to have a lot of camera time or be giving him a lot of camera time is the rider of the 222, the Thug Custom Cycles entry. It's the killer, Tom Keller. Tom, thank you so much for being on the show, buddy. Hey, thank you very much, Terry. Looking forward to seeing you at the race. Looking forward to killer footage. You always make it stand make it stand out, make us look like we're doing everything right, like we should be. Really appreciate you putting us on. Really looking forward to seeing you soon, brother. And just like everybody else, we cannot wait to get back out on the water, or in our case, along the water, make some people famous in Branson. Fans don't move. We're going to talk a little bit more about the Branson race when we come back to the Racer H2O podcast in a hair over 15 seconds. You're listening to the Racer H2O podcast. RacerH2O.com is the place to go to find easy-to-use links to our social media. Watch, read, listen to, and enjoy our content on demand for free on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and RacerH2O.com. This is the Racer H2O podcast. All right, troops, welcome back to the podcast. Once again, many thanks to our guest this week, Tom Keller, always a colorful interview from the 222. I uh, wanted to tell you guys a little bit more about what we've got going on in Branson on the media end and on the race format end. There will be two full days of racing, two days worth of trophies being handed out at the end of the day. It's going to be a huge, huge weekend in Branson. Race days are going to be qualifying early afternoon feature at the end of the day. So again, Saturday you get a trophy, Sunday you can get a trophy, two full days of racing. So if you've been cooped up and you want to get out and you want to race your ski or you want to race your Pro Tunnel 2 boat, Branson is the place to be on August 22nd and 23rd. Still got plenty of time to make your travel arrangements. Plus, and this is where we come in, both days are going to be televised on the entire family of Racer H2O television networks. FTF 11 Sports, our national television partner. 90 million households. Then you add on six, seven, eight regional networks. We're going to be out in front of fans well over. I have to check my math on this because I think our number is a little low. But well over 120 million households. So... If you've got a sponsor, if you're looking to get a sponsor, you need to be at this race. Because let's face it, fans, the way things are looking with this COVID-19 thing, we may not have many fall sports. College football kind of up in the air right now. We don't know what's going to happen. So there's going to be a lot of time on television. And we want to get this race out to as many people as we can. So it's going to be re-aired like crazy. This is a great opportunity to represent your team, represent your sport. Maybe land that sponsor. You just never know. Plus, and this is one of the great things about Branson fans, and I, and I can't stress this enough. Many times when we go to these events, the fans that are at the event are fans from that city or from that town. They're, they're, they just came. There's something going on there. They want to check it out. 
that's cool. But they're from that town that you're racing in. The thing about Branson fans, this is a tourist town. So there are people, and trust me, ask anybody that's raced there. 2019, it was crazy. Huge crowds, shoulder to shoulder. Hopefully they social distance this year, I'm sure that, and we'll get into that in the coming shows as we get closer to the event. We're going to have people from Branson on. We're going to have people from Powerboat Nationals on talking about the Branson race, talking about the COVID-19 protocol, all that kind of stuff. But the fans are a completely different group of people than we're used to than what we're used to working with. These are fans that are from all over the world. They've come to Branson to have a good time and hey, guess what? While they're there, there's a race going on at T- Lake Taney Como. And we're racing right in the middle of one of the biggest shopping districts in Branson. So they hear the engines come on and they all move from the stores and restaurants down to Lakeside to watch this race. So you've got fans from all over the place that maybe haven't seen watercraft racing before in person. And they're going to be checking out Powerboat Nationals, Pro Tunnel 2, and Hydrocross Racing in Branson. So, again, fans, riders, drivers, stop what you're doing. Make plans right now to be in Branson, Missouri, August 22nd and 23rd. Two full days of racing, both days nationally televised regionally televised of course we'll have it on our social media as well it just doesn't get any better than this especially in a year where we're looking for something positive we're looking to get out of the house we're looking to do things safely and race at a safe event branson missouri is the place to be august 22nd and 23rd follow us on social media fans we're going to have a bunch of information we're going to have people from branson the branson convention and visitors bureau We're going to have them on the show. We're going to have people from Powerboat Nationals on the show in the coming weeks as we get closer. And, of course, our cameras will be there rolling for our television coverage. So be sure to like, share, subscribe, follow. Tell all the people you know. Tell some people you don't know. Follow us on social media and get all the scoop on what's going to be the biggest watercraft racing event of the year in Branson, Missouri, August 22nd, 23rd. So we thank you for listening to the podcast, fans. Wash your hands, wear your mask, maintain social distance. We'll get through this together. I'm your old pal, Jared. Until next week, this has been the Racer H2O Podcast.